Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. After record liquidation after years of drought, Oklahoma producers are in the process of rebuilding their herds. And one option they have is to turn to technology to time the breeding process. What we're doing today is we're out here with a, with a breeding box, is what we call this structure behind me. And what it does, it allows us to come in with two or three people that are able to AI, and they will bring cattle in here. We have two in, we have two stalls that we can put two heifers, two cows, whatever they might be, in at a time, and then we will take and use the semen that the customer wants. Using this shoot side box, in addition to a 10-day synchronization process to ensure the cattle are ovulating, means trading a little bit of cost for a big reduction in labor. As you notice, it's, it's a dark area. These cattle come in and they're calm, they're on ground, and there's just a pole behind them. And our conception rates seem to be a lot better when we're able to use less stress on the heifers or cows as they come through this process evidence of just how much technology has advanced since the early days when few producers actually used AI. And those who did mainly worked in the dairy industry. We, we went from that point where there was just a few people servicing the dairies and then helping with the beef people to where now, you know, it's not uncommon to have, uh, you know, at least, you know, 10 or 15 people in a county that can AI for other people around. To learn more about the sync protocol used to get these cows ready to breed on the same day, we turn to Oklahoma State University animal breeding specialist Dan Stein. Protocol began when the cows were uh, processed or brought into the chute and we administered a uh, progesterone called a cedar, controlled internal drug release, and we gave a shot of uh, GNRH. Uh, the cedar was in for a week, seven days, and uh, the day we pulled the cedar, we gave a shot of uh, prostaglandin. Uh, then we're in a window, a timing window of about 60 to 66 hours we have that we come back and start, start breeding cattle. Uh, right before the cattle are entering the uh, breeding box, uh, we are administering uh, the third injection, which is the, another shot of GNRH to, to ensure those cows have ovulated. So uh, some of the older protocols that we had, uh, we, we were just able to synchronize what we call estrus or a standing heat period where we'd have to come out and visually observe uh, and watch for standing heat and then breed off uh, those times that we observed. Uh, today the protocols are such that uh, we can uh, synchronize ovulation within that standing heat period or that estrus period and uh, we show up at a certain time on a certain day, start breeding cows. So there's some sophisticated management that goes into it, but the, the benefit is is that you're controlling that breeding time and all your cows are getting uh, bred at the same time? Uh, bred at the same time, and that, that takes a lot of labor out of, uh, again, if, I'm, if I was just, uh, had my cows just what we called a, a synchronized uh, standing heat period, I'd be out here maybe morning and night observing animals that were standing heat and then coming back and, and breeding those either the next morning or that evening. And uh, a lot of labor, just individual labor there. Uh, here, everything's done at, at one time. Uh, there's still labor involved, but it's, it's just down to a day, so. And if I'm a producer who's rebuilding my herd after a couple of rough years, this is a, is a decent option? It is. I, I feel like uh, here in Oklahoma, as far as the opportunities we have to, as we rebuild our herds, the, the use of artificial insemination to, again, we can bring in a sire that uh, has proven genetics. And uh, again, I can, I can always buy a bull uh, out of the semen tank uh, for a lot less money than I can on hoof. So we do have that opportunity, especially with our small producers. Uh, most of our producers in the state have cows with 50 head or less in their herd. And uh, again, this, will, this is another management tool that we can use to, in that rebuilding program. A tool we may see much more of as Oklahoma's cattle herd continues to bounce back.